in my view, we moved very quickly from a pandemic chaos uh, into a geopolitical chaos. And there have been, I would say, a lot of repercussions on the market. I'm here today with Dominique Morenhout, CEO of EPRA. How did the European listed real estate sector behave during the pandemic? What about the performance of the sectors? I think we can say that the sector has been roughly very resilient uh, across the whole pandemic uh, period. Uh, the recovery has been five times quicker than following the global financial crisis in 2008. Uh, and the sector was already back uh, to its pre-pandemic level in uh, August 2021, so roughly 18 months after the start of, uh, of the crisis. And this is mainly due to the fact that our sector did draw some good lessons from the GFC, uh, did restructure entirely uh, the debt uh, in the companies, and that was really helpful. The global financial crisis was mainly a solvency crisis, but the pandemic was more a liquidity crisis. Um, I would say regarding the sectors, I would say a little bit like in the US, uh, the, the most performing sectors have been uh, self-storage, uh, industrial and residential. ESG has gained ground globally. Can you tell us more about the evolution of European regulation when it comes to ESG? ESG is a very important three letters, uh, completely uh, complementary to each other, equal importance. And we have seen, of course, the members very active on the E part for many, many years. It's also today, I would say, uh, all uh, our members have a very clear uh, roadmap uh, going to the net zero. Uh, tra transition, but during the pandemic, I would say the S part of ESG has also uh, been very uh, present. Uh, we have seen a lot of, I would say, activities done on the S part from uh, from a membership. Uh, coming back on your question for the regulation, it's clear that the sustainability or ESG regulation is in Europe is evolving very rapidly. Uh, in our opinion, it's not always, I would say, optimal uh, because the biggest regulation we have in place is what we call the EU taxonomy, which unfortunately today seems to incentivize more, I would say, the construction of brand new green buildings instead of uh, tackling the real issue, which is the retrofitting of the existing building stock. Across Europe, over 35% of the stock is over 50 years old. Renovation rate is below 1%. Uh, so if we want to achieve, I would say, the, the big targets by 2030, 2040, 2040, it will not be only by building brand new green buildings. We first need to tackle uh, the, uh, the existing uh, building stock. What's the impact of the war in Ukraine having on the European market? Yeah, so the, the, it will bring, I would say, to the sector, and it brings already today a lot of uh, instability, uh, volatility, uh, uncertainty. Uh, in my view, we moved very quickly from a pandemic chaos uh, into a geopolitical chaos. And there have been, I would say, a lot of repercussions on the market. Uh, also, during a read week here, everybody's talking about inflation. Can we talk about stagflation? Have we have to talk about a recession? Uh, we see also the war in Ukraine on our sector for members active also in the construction uh, industry or making brand new developments. Construction costs have increased by over 25% since the beginning of uh, the, the war uh, in Ukraine. There is also a big impact on the commodity price, on energy prices everywhere. So, so it's, it's a very complicated uh, market for, uh, for, for the time being. But I would say on the other side, our sector is ready for that. As I said earlier, the, the companies have completely restricted structured at that, so they are, I would say, very well prepared uh, to cope with also rising interest rates. So that's the first thing. Secondly, ESG is also seen as an opportunity to cope with uh, the, the crisis, but also more importantly, to uh, NARIT, but EPRA as well, have also conducted a lot of research papers over the last year, really confirming that even during an inflationary environment, the sector is very well prepared because the, 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 the companies turn over, companies' profits and shareholders' returns is always highly correlated to the inflation. How do you assess investors' appetite for listed real estate? The, the appetite is there. Um, I would just say that for the time being, especially uh, across Europe with the, this old uncertainty created by the war, uh, investors, I can't say they are bearish, they are more, I would say, cautious. 
uh, in their in their investment. So, so they want to take a little bit of time to see okay how the situation will evolve uh, in the coming month. What we have seen over the last two years, 2020, 2021, we saw substantial amount uh, coming into the global listed real estate sector. Uh, a lot of money coming from uh, Asia. Uh, this year, we start seeing more and more money coming from the uh, from the Middle East, which is also quite uh, quite promising because those players traditionally invested mainly in the uh, unlisted real estate sector compared to listed. So, I would say um, uh, I would say a cautious environment, but very good perspectives going forward. And that's, in my opinion, that's also one of the reasons it's very important. And I read at and EPRA continue to do like we used to do before the pandemic to bring the global messaging to investors everywhere in the world. So that's why I would say very happy that we are now, I would say, back in person uh, for real conference to meet with real investors. And I think uh, NEREIT and EPRA will continue to do a lot of efforts for the global listed real estate sector.